What if I said there was an even better way to do this, to get rid of maybe that last barrier that conferencing gives us? And that last barrier is limited control over the quality of video and audio that we have. So I think there is a better way. And this is exactly what we've been doing here at Epifan for our own internal content creation for just about a year now. I introduce and propose using SRT for this type of higher quality transport. So those not familiar with SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport. It's a protocol created by High Vision and designed to be low latency, pretty network and firewall friendly, and most of all secure because it does offer encryption. High Vision Vision thought this is a lot of things, including a possibility of using the internet we use every day and using lower cost products and, and easier cost of entry to replace the older traditional satellite truck, if you will. So instead of spending millions on satellite trucks, what if we could do it with things we might already have and achieve, in many cases, better results? And so I would say we can take that same philosophy and, and apply that to video conferencing as well. So one of the things that makes SRT really nice is that unlike some of the more traditional streaming protocols like RTMP, where you mostly just kind of throw it at the wall and hope it sticks, SRT is much more advanced in some of the other features it has. So it does have the traditional video and audio stream going from point A to point B, but it also has a secondary data channel as a back channel with diagnostic and packet recovery information. That allows us to gain a lot of stats about what's happening. We can look at the stats and see our round trip time. We can look at our packet loss percentage, and we can make decisions based on those numbers to see the quality of our connection and, and adjust it as necessary. This gives us a lot of power and strength. And it means that we can bring that latency way down compared to some of the other uh, things. And this is where, you know, uh, the other guys mentioned latency quite a lot. And, you know, typical what we're used to for traditional broadcast television was mentioned earlier about five to eight seconds. And, you know, when we look at other stream types, they're kind of in that space and some are much longer. On a strong connection, it's possible to have SRT down below hundred milliseconds, even on weaker connections it's very possible to have it under a second. And these are things that we can easily achieve with the right technologies. And of course, our total latency from creation to consumption, there's always gonna be some additions there as we add the CDN, maybe adds a bit more, transcoding adds a bit more and so on. But as we can shorten each part of that chain, it ultimately shortens the whole chain, hopefully. And if we can start with something that's low latency like SRT, it really helps. I think the other thing that's been really exciting about SRT is that it is backed by the SRT Alliance, uh, made up of 450 plus members at this point. And these are companies, uh, many of whom are, are represented here today, um, that are working as a collective to see this technology really shine. Um, ourselves here at Epifan Video are part of the Alliance, as are many of our friends at places like Wowza, uh, Bird Dog, and, and so on. Um, and I'll mention Bird Dog a little later here. Um, but this means that every now and then, these companies also get together and play in a sandbox to figure out how to interop this. And because they're using this technology, it makes interop even easier between different products, whether those are hardware encoders like we make, whether they're CDNs out there, whether they're camera manufacturers. But being able to bring these all together over a single protocol is pretty exciting. So. How do we bring in a remote guest over SRT? That's ultimately the question and what I'm trying to propose. How we could do this is we can send out a remote hardware encoder. Uh, in this case, I'm representing our Pearl Nano, our most recent small hardware encoder. Have our camera and audio, hopefully high quality ones, plugged into that encoder. And it would send SRT to our production hub, totally remotely. In our case, I'm representing our production hub with Pearl 2. That Pearl 2 can ingest that SRT stream, maybe add some other elements of production and send it back out to the final destination, maybe in another stream type, maybe also in SRT, multiple destinations at the same time, whatever you need. 
if we need to scale this up into multiple guests, then yes, we would have multiple endpoints with multiple remote contribution encoders. And in this case of showing, you know, several Perl nanos, all feeding those back again into our centralized production hub. It can then do all the mixing and switching between these different streams and then record and stream uh, onto the final destination. One of the things that you know is, is interesting, people say, okay, well, that sounds great on paper, but who's actually doing this? And we use this, and, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we do this and describe to you how we do this. About a year ago when everything kind of went crazy, um, we started out like most people did and, and pivoted immediately to Zoom. We were already a Zoom customer. Uh, we'd been using it for over a year for a variety of things anyways. And so that made our transition to work from home instantaneous. And, and we were very lucky to have that. We started doing our content creation that way, but very quickly we're very unsatisfied with the quality of the image and the audio that we were getting from Zoom. And we wanted to find a better way. It just so happened that we were already in the process of rolling out SRT into our hardware encoders. And so we distributed, for those of us who do content creation, we distributed those encoders to our homes. Many of us had them anyways, and started using SRT as our workflow. This allowed us to make the most of our individual internet connections, bringing up the overall quality of video and audio we were contributing to the, uh, to the production. And this made a huge difference. And I cannot tell you the comments I get about how good our productions look compared to what they were. I did a webinar yesterday for two hours and there's just nonstop comments about how good and how qu high quality it was. And that's all thanks to the way we're using SRT to deliver it. So what we do is we still do use Zoom, but we use it as only a back channel of audio communication so that our remote, multiple remote participants can communicate in real time. Those remote participants are also sending an SRT stream with their high quality camera and high quality audio through SRT into our main studio production hub using a Perl 2, where it then mixes and switches between all of that content and then sends it back out to the final destination. This makes it honestly very easy for most people to set up. Uh, we can even pre-configure these remote contribution encoders. I've participated in a bunch of webinars and content creation using it uh, this way. And when we do it here, you know, it, fairly locally with our staff in our Ottawa, Canada kind of region, it's very easy for me to do about hundred millisecond latency. When I need to bring in someone from our California office, yeah, we need to bring that up a bit and it's about 200 milliseconds. I've joined webinars with some of our distribution partners in Europe, sending an SRT stream from my home to Belgium. And I've had to go to 300 milliseconds to play it safe, but that's still pretty fast. And the worst case I've been involved in is bringing in some of our friends at Bird Dog in Australia to join us on a webinar. And their connection wasn't great. And it's the other side of the world. And the worst case we had to do was 500 milliseconds. This made a huge difference in how we were able to deliver content. And, and this has been a fantastic experience from someone who stares into camera lenses a lot during the day um, and can be very, very good 